of course also I, I there is another scripture in Isaiah um, Isaiah 51 11 which also find uh, very essential for our topic today and Isaiah 5 uh, 11 says that woe to those who arise early in the morning in pursuit of beer who linger into the evening inflamed by wine in the morning you're waking up looking for alcohol substances in the evening before you sleep you're running into alcohol and substances so now the question is what are we supposed to do in the morning and in the evening in the morning i woke up and praise the lord in the in the noon time in the evening that is what actually we are supposed to be doing constantly in our lives as christians because the word of god says in uh, in psalms that from the rising of the sun to the setting of the sun praised be the name of the lord so that means as the sun rises in the morning and as the sun sets in the evening, I am supposed to be praising the Lord. Even the catechism of the Catholic Church is very clear that the reason why we were created is so that we can know God, we can love Him, we can serve Him, and later on to be with Him in the kingdom of heaven. So our work is to serve our God. That's why our being is extracted from the being of God. That's why God says that He has given us His image and likeness. So that the very life that is in God can be also in us. But look at people who use substance. They are dead. Dead walking. I don't know whether you've watched that movie. The dead walking. So sometimes we get to a point that actually we are stinking. And so when you are alcoholic, when you are addicted to substances, actually you keep the substance constantly in the mind. And the one who dominates most of your time, that is your God. So alcohol can be our God. So we need really for us to be able to come back to God and be able to worship God in truth and spirit, we need really to uh, ask the Holy Spirit to come and guide us and help us. And we have seen people really who have been transformed tremendously by the power of God. And my father is one of them. He was super, super alcoholic. I got a chance, I went to Subuki, I was a young boy crying for the life of my father. And when I went there, I really prayed in front of the statue of Blessed Virgin Mary. And when I prayed, I prayed for my dad. And I say, Lord, I pray that my dad may change forever. And actually, that, 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 that in the following two months, like this was August, in October, my dad comes home and he is not using substance. And he was completely addicted. So we have seen people being transformed by God and they change their lives forever. So maybe as a Christian, you need really to turn to God. And even those who are not Christians, seek Christian rehabilitations if they are there. And you know, when I say this, I know is uh, Algo does not only impact those who are out there in the secular world. I know pastors who have come to me struggling with substance use. So this thing can impact every one of us. And so we need really to reach out and seek help so that we can be supported in those particular areas that we are struggling. So that if it is trauma, then we are taken through the process of inner healing. It is scriptural that we are supposed to be filled by the Holy Spirit. That is Ephesians uh, chapter 5 verse 8. That do not be uh, filled with, uh, with, with alcohol, be filled with the Holy Spirit. And what does it mean, being filled by the Holy Spirit? Is it just being he be filled a bit, a little bit? Or is it being filled all? That means we have to allow Jesus in our lives, my brothers and sisters, in every corner of our lives. Even those very dark areas where abuses have taken place. And we have hidden that, we don't want anyone to know. And as a result of trying to cover up on that, we have got into substance use. Allow Jesus to get in those areas and bring healing. Some of us probably have gone through rape or sodomy. Or we have gone through very, very evil and very dark, you know, experiences that have destroyed and messed up our lives. Maybe found ourselves in abortions or whatever. And we don't want any other person to know. Or we are having unfaithful relationships. And so as a way of sustaining that so that you can remain sober, uh, or some other times you can also, um, you can, um, you know, escape goats, you know. The reason why you are this way is because you are using the substance. But we know very well is because there is an underlying thing that happened in your life. So that's why then when you allow oh, the Holy Spirit to get into those areas, He can actually heal them. So that's why inner healing for me is very essential in the healing process. So that's why for me those who come for therapy, even as much as I want to keep it uh, on the secular training that I've been given, I have also this spiritual backup, which I've realized is very essential, and I help people also go through the inner healing process. And when you go through the inner pro healing process, it actually heals everything, even those areas that you yourself did not know that they needed help. So, for example, there is a, a young lady that I met who is a celebrity. I can't mention her name because everybody knows her. And what happened with her is she was a young church girl 
really, really living a very good life. And even at the point she was 21, she was given a role in the church to become a pastor. At the age of 21, imagine. Because she was so good. And good in preaching, good in singing. She was wonderful. Then after that, she got pregnant. Without the church wedding and other things. And so what happened after that? There was shame. And everybody else started, you know, speaking ill of her. And after that, she, you know, withdrawn into depression. And after depression, then all these manner of experiences, even having, you know, experiences with other women and many other things that started happening. Of course, she became a celebrity that goes everywhere out there in the world to go and sing. And when she sings, everybody, you know, laughs her. She comes back home, she locks herself in the room because she's really, really broken. And she doesn't experience that joy. That So when we go through the process of healing, Jesus is able to heal all those areas of their lives. So that's why the spiritual healing is what is key because there is also a spiritual impact of um, substance use or there is a, a spiritual cause of substance use in this way. You know, even, even those very secular people who talk of spirituality, not really a, about being Christian, spirituality has two elements, purpose and meaning. Purpose and meaning. Why is it that you live? Why is it that you, what is your purpose in life? That's what spirituality is. Even if you don't want to bring it to a, a Christian perspective, you can still look at it that way. That it is something that gives you meaning and purpose. Look at Islam. Islam will come and tell you that when you live well, according to the rules put in place um, by God through Prophet Muhammad, uh, that is put in the Quran, then you will be able to enter heaven. So that means if you follow the instruction, praying or having salah every day from, I mean five times every day, and also being able to fast, also being able to go to Mecca, what is the name? Me Mecca? Where, you know, yes, uh, at least once, you know, being able to do these things and giving sucker and all that. So if you're able to do this, you go to heaven. What does that tell you? It is giving you a purpose and a meaning of living your life. They have, for example, Islam have a statement that they say that Allah has allowed it. So when they say Allah has allowed it, let us accept it. It means that even when you're going through turmoil and challenges in life, you can still go through the spiritual healing and you find meaning after that. There are many people who have got, come to an end of life and somehow by a spiritual encounter with God, they have more new meaning in life. And so it's essential we really go through the spiritual healing. Look even at the Hindus and the others. They have those uh, elements of spiritual, uh, element of uh, purpose and meaning. So I encourage you, let us also invest much more on the healing process, the Christian healing process that he uses. Maybe through therapy, which has a Christian perspective, through inner healing, retreat, and conferences, it's important to go through that. Or someone who can join with us. Some people have come to me who, have, who are lacking father's love. And when you are there constantly mentoring them and giving them that fatherly love, you'll be surprised they get healed. And that's the only thing that they needed. So the entire time they were suffering of all this use of substance, not because they really wanted to drink, and I've had people say that alcohol is not good, I don't like it, I, it doesn't even taste good, but I find myself there. But you see, when this person experiences that love, which is genuine and real, without taking advantage of someone, you know, they basically feel like, wow, this is what I needed. And they start recovering slowly by slowly. So even when we have alcoholic, let us love them, let us support them, let us be there for them. If we are priests and we have sisters who are alcoholic, let us not condemn them. They are human beings as well. Let us go and support them. This is not the time to take the priest and take them back to the bishop. What would the bishop do with a priest who is alcoholic? So we need to support them and find ways in which we can help them and help our people. If it's a Christian leader, a moderator in the church, let, let them get support. If it's a, a Jumuiya member, let them go to get support so that you don't have all these cases being reported to you that there, are, there is immorality in the, in, the, in, the, in the small Christian community or other challenges that are taking place. So it's good we uh, approach uh, substance use from a spiritual perspective that really brings a lot of healing. Because one of the things that alcoholic does, especially when you become addicted, it takes away the meaning, the purpose, self-esteem, and many other things. Okay? So it is only in God that all of us are welcome. The Word of God tells us that I don't reject anyone who comes to me. So we are all welcome. We are all accepted by God. He says, come, let us negotiate this. Let us talk this through. Even if your sins are this and this and that, I will change them. So that means the Lord is inviting me, inviting you. Whichever challenges that we're going through, that he can help us go through them. But we have to admit that we are poor, 
we are beggars, we are vulnerable, we are weak, and he's the only one who is strong. Once we do that, it's easy for us to move on with life. So I wish you well as we make the last prayer that every single day, try as much as you can to draw close to God. That will help you to avoid all these other distractions that are happening in life. Thank you. I wish you well. Hope to see you uh, next week. <laughs>